Tim, we're down here with Whiskey Creek behind us. This is Mason Borough Marina. This is where we applied for a permit to try to grow some juvenile shellfish here. Um, our first video created a little bit of a stir. You know, it, it highlighted what our issue was about the availability of getting to the water in a nice, convenient, safe, secure place. I drove down here the other day. It took a minute and 40 seconds to get here from the house. This is convenient to me. Um, an issue has been made of the fact that this was a marina. Marinas are closed because there are biological issues there with bacteria. <clears throat> I was encouraged by one of the commission members that the burden was on me to prove that there were no toxic elements here, poisonous and deleterious substances. I, I hesitated because I felt like unless someone assured me that if we had a, a good outcome with a toxicity test here, whether I would get a permit or not. I just didn't want to take and throw $200 away testing for stuff. So I called Shellfish Sanitation and said, <clears throat> okay, I'm going to foot the bill for a test for poisonous and deleterious substances. What are you concerned about? So I can um, price it out and make arrangements to have the test done. Well, lo and behold, we've already taken samples. We're sending this information off to um, Department of Water, Division of Water Quality or something like that. But anyway, they did the toxicity test. It came back wonderful. The FDA tolerance level for arsenic in water is 86. Two samples here came back. One came back 3.9 parts per million. Another sample came back 5 parts per million. These are the, these are the tolerance levels for consumable shellfish. They're certainly not going to present an issue in the seed that would happen later. Well, I was told, well, these arsenic levels are too high. And I'll, I'll have a little trouble comprehending that. So I kept hearing there was a state health official that said that this arsenic levels, levels were too high. So I called Dr. Rudo. And we got to talking, and, you know, and it finally became obvious to me that Shellfish Sanitation was shopping for a, an opinion. You know, the FDA looks over their shoulder all the time, audits them, uh, makes them go by the guidelines and the rules of the National Shellfish Sanitation Program. All Shellfish Sanitation had to do was turn around and say, are you okay with these results? Can we let this gentleman have a permit to, to use this location? Well, I kept saying, you know, you know, what state health official? So it said Dr. Rudo, and I was denied a permit based partly on the statement, based on this data, we believe that consumption of shellfish with these elevated levels of AIDS and zinc may pose an increased health risk over time. My doctor says the same thing about red meat. You know, I mean, I, I didn't see where that was valid. Well, kind of hit a little roadblock there. And then, do you remember when the apple juice thing came out and the arsenic levels and all that? Well, they cited an expert, Dr. Joshua Hamilton of the Marine Biological Lab at Woods Hole. So I gave him a phone call, explained to him my circumstances, and uh, he said, well, arsenic in groundwater is different than arsenic in seawater. You're probably dealing with something called um, arbicinotane which is as harmless as table salt. I said, well, will you put all this in writing? He said, sure. Send me an email and we will, I'll elaborate on this. And all this is going to be posted on North Carolina Waterman as links to this kind of stuff. So now we're finding out that um, he went on to explain about the arbicinotane and how it was harmless and all that. And uh, he just said, let's see. He concluded that I was dealing with a faulty analysis and interpretation of the arsenic levels. You'll see that in the email that he has sent. Now I understand the disparity between seawater and groundwater about arsenic levels. When it's 86 parts per million for oysters, it's because we're dealing with arbicinotate. When it's two or three parts per billion in groundwater, we're talking about a toxic form of arsenic. Well. You know, I found a unique newspaper article about arsenic in oysters. Right here in the Cape Fear region, 
our oysters have the highest level of arsenic in them. They found in a study in the late 80s, and I don't think the geology of the area has changed a great deal since then, that the oysters down behind Ballhead Island in the mouth of the Cape Fear River have 43 parts per million arsenic. Now, I'm denied a permit because of five parts per million, and we can go and dig oysters and clams with oysters down behind Ballhead Island, which have much, much higher levels of arsenic. But it's the different type, it's the harmless type of arsenic. Well, and this, this condition exists from the Cape Fear River all the way down to Florida, but we have the highest level of it right here in this area. Uh, I forwarded this information to North Carolina Public Health, Dr. Hamilton's email, our first video. I'm not sure, but I think the state health director doesn't want any part of this. You know, they, the FDA looks over shellfish sanitation shoulder. They don't need, I don't think they want to get involved in this. I could be wrong, but I think I'm confident in that. Now, in November, Dr. Daniel asked the members of the commission if they thought it was a good idea to grow seed in prohibited water, prohibited from harvesting and selling, and selling this stuff all over the state. Well, I've only got one response. We already have a guy doing that. Bill Cox in South Carolina grows seed in prohibited water. He has sold, I don't know how many millions, I, I'm sure it's at least a couple of million over the last 15 or 20 years that he has sold in North Carolina. And the only requirement that the Division of Marine Fisheries has required of him is a veterinary thing where they test for shellfish diseases. They don't get involved in the poisonous and deleterious substances. So as I said, we already have a guy distributing the type of shellfish around the state that we're not allowed to do. You know, I kind of wonder what his levels of zinc and arsenic in are in his seat. Um, no one probably knows that. I'm going to have to bring this, I'm going to try to bring this issue back before the Marine Fisheries Commission, either via a, a declaratory ruling or whatever. The first time we went around, I wasn't prepared. I didn't know how to present my information. I'm not near, I'm a lot more informed now than I was five years ago. Uh, as this points out, everyone else has been able to resolve this issue except North Carolina. And I have trouble understanding why. Now, they gave it their best shot with the arsenic thing. I think we've um, disproved that, that it was not a, a, a sound basis for a permanent denial for this safe, convenient location down here two minutes from my house. Thank you.